You're listening to the Hosan Leong podcast. Hey, it's Hosan and it's Ben. And uh, today we are going to have a very special guest with us. Um Unfortunately, you weren't there at the recording because you were busy. Yeah. Um, it's about, it's, it's Pam Wee, a really good friend of ours. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and how she she deals with being a parent, director, actor, host, producer, along with a whole host of other things that She's she does. She's really a multi-hyphenate, there are many hyphens yeah. in her roles. <laughs> <laughs> Pam Wee. So uh, stay tuned for that in just a while. How have you been? Um. Uh, well, uh, a little bit harassed because, you know, all the schedules are all, all over the place. Really busy. On top yeah. of the Rugby World Cup. On top of the Rugby World Cup. I think so that, upset. that scrambled my brains a little bit. <laughs> all right, stay tuned for Pam Wee. And if, and if you wanted to go and do a number two, what would your parents say to you? Yeah. And they must make the face, right? You know, like, mm, mm. And then the baby's like, why is mommy doing this strange, ugly face at me? I don't understand. Mm. Then if you want milk, they say, drink. Nen, nen. Oh. Right? And then you want to bathe, they go and say, do what? Oh. I'm not strange after all. You all speak my language. My father would say this to me, you know, he says, Hosan, I want you to go and mum mum, and then nan nan. After that, I want you to mm and then she she. After that, you must boom boom. Then take your cho cho and go and. So hi Pam, hi. Pam, Pamela Wee, Pam Wee. Hi Jose, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> no, of course we wanted you because you know we've known each other for years. Yeah, um, but I don't remember years. when we first met. Though, do you remember? You do you remember? I, I, is, is this a test? Because I don't. Well, I, I my memory is not great. I remember when I first saw you. I have I don't didn't know you then. Okay. But I first saw you uh, when you were with Theatre Works, oh. rolling down a hill. Oh yes, 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 and I thought, okay, this is called dedication. Broken la. birds, something like that, a longing or broken birds yeah, or yeah, one of yeah, those. Yeah. I don't understand type, you know. I I, I think that um, that show a lot of us earned our stripes because we rolled down the hill, mm. and then there were points where mm. during rehearsals we were told to roll up the hill. <laughs> By Ong Keng Sen. So, Ong Keng Sen wins. Uh. Yeah, so rolling up the hill, wow, I tell you. But I, I, when I was watching you guys walking along the wall mm. of Fort Canning, you know, in the, with the light and the, your bl- 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 uh, billowing robes and all that, and very slowly, by the way, very slowly. it took half an hour to walk from one end to the something like that. Yes. And I felt really stupid. I was like, what? is going on. Why don't I understand what they are doing? Why? Why? Why are they walking so slowly? And yeah. and is the reason you notice me because I was the shortest? <laughs> No, because of the intensity. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes there's intensity. <laughs> you thanks, thanks, uh, thanks. and Janice <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but then I think we kind of connected after that. Uh, when when I, I remember it was Substation at Fat Frog, or something like that. Oh yes, there was a bar the, called Fat Frog. Yeah, and I used to play Friday nights there. Yes. I think with another guitarist. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So yeah, and then of course we became firm friends after that. Um, yeah, we've yeah. done so much work together. So much work. Um, As you know, that uh, Hosan is a uh, the chopstick. <laughs> He's yes. the chopstick in the dim sum dollies. Yeah, and and those those were those were really fun days as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy days, crazy days, crazy days. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Remember the dance steps? Yeah, thirteen there. Was it thirteen? What show was that? The first dim sum dollies. Oh, with thirteen. Is with it? thirteen steps, and then Ivan has it. Okay, never mind. Change <laughs> choreographer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Pam strains to remember this choreographer. Okay. Um, okay anyway, I'll okay, tell okay, you okay. off uh-huh. air. Okay. <laughs> now, UK, Pam Wee, band, you're in a band, Ugly in the Morning, mm. um, actor, director, host, MC, stand up comedian, mother. Yeah. All Ellen right? Carr therapist. Ellen Carr therapist as well, which we will talk about later as well. So many hats, wife, uh, sister, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sister, <Yeah. laughs> and friend. How do you juggle? I'm, I'm sure you get asked all this all the time. How do you, um, how do you juggle? 
with great difficulty, mm. uh, I also get a lot of help, especially when it comes to the child. Yeah. Um, so that's not something you can just like, okay, you hold on uh, and then you go and do other things. I mean, this person needs to be fed, needs to go to toilet, needs yeah. to, you know what I mean? It's, I mean, needs to go to school. It's your son, he's constantly there yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. You're yeah. there for him. Yeah. yeah. So I, 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 I get by uh, with my very busy schedule with a lot of help. My okay. mother-in-law is a great source of help and uh-huh. uh, I have a great babysitter. And of course, uh, Ken is an equal parent. Yes, uh, Ken. My mm. husband is an equal parent and he, he whenever I'm on a show, we try to juggle. Um, this year has been particularly tough because we've been on two big projects together. Mm. So that means it's like, it's called relay, pass the baton kind of um, child rearing. I, <clears> and I, I, I think I was sitting next to you when it happened <laughs> as well. And I just... I really did take my hat off you, no, to off you, off to you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I want my hat back. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was okay. So you, you did the play with Ken, right? Yes. And then what play was it called? Uh, uh, this is what happens to pretty girls. Exactly with Pandemonium. Yeah. And then the movie which you produced and acted in, and Ken directed and yes. wrote it. Oh God. And Shan Ming calls you. Yeah. In the middle of makeup. Yeah. And he's wanting to talk to you and yes. wants you or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. He was yeah. crying. He was crying. Yes. Yeah. How, what was going through your mind back then? I mean, I, I, I felt the, yeah. the anguish. <laughs> I, I think he missed us because it was unusual for us to be both Together, away. Yeah. And uh, he missed us. He wanted to come on set. And we were like, no, you cannot come on set. There's a lot of equipment. I mean, he is an eight-year-old boy. So it's, mm. you know, the destruction is his middle name. So no, <laughs> please don't come on set. Um, I think you just have to for one minute talk to him and then explain to him why we cannot be home right now and then you just have to trust that whoever is looking after him at that point in time will just have to take over because I, I can't you know um, bring him on set mm, yeah so sure. you just have to it, it's quite tough lah. Mm. it's quite tough but you just have to do it and then I think after a few weeks he got used to it mm. yeah mm. and then he he tried to make Ken swear never to make another movie ever again oh wow yeah oh, dear. Um, and then uh, we just come kind of like, mm, you know, the best, you know, like, mm, mm. you see how it goes, you know, that type <laughs> of a mumbly, non-committal response. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I, that was tough. Like mm. uh, uh, listening to a your boy cry down the phone because he missed us because we were both at work was like, yeah. yeah. And it was an overnight shoot somehow. So you weren't going to yeah. be home at night. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So he was either staying at grandma's mm. or the babysitter was staying overnight or something like that. Yeah. But you, you don't have a full-time helper, right? I don't. Okay. So it's, it's even while it's like, voila, how do you do it? <laughs> Right. Yeah, <laughs> and um, we have great mm. support from um, our siblings. Okay. Ken's siblings are very uh, hands-on with him. Mm. So uh, there's a whole, especially when the weekend comes, there's a whole, okay, so from Saturday, mom, you take him to swimming and after swimming, uh, you take him to lunch and after lunch, you pass him to Kim with this bag. This is the bag for Kim's house. And then Kim, who is uh, Ken's sister, will, okay, Kim, then you, and then on Saturday, okay, on Saturday, he has f- football, okay, these are his, these are his boots. <laughs> and then next morning, because you have to go for a marathon run, so then you go, on Saturday night you're going to have Kevin what? yeah so it's a whole it's, there is a whole Excel spreadsheet yeah. oh schedule for taking care of the kid without a full time helper but when, you're amazing because I mean when you do a production you're like that also you have an Excel sheet of a to-do list right I do um, but you're very organised so yeah. I try to be organised yeah. but sometimes it really some mm. things escape me too because when we're growing up I, I don't know about you but when my parents both were working as well so mm. I never got to see my parents a lot because they yeah. were out all day. And, I, I, and I, of course, like, I didn't have football, etc., <laughs> etc. Yeah, yeah. et et Mine was come back from school and play, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, and that, that was the way it was for us. Um, and was it like that for you as well growing up? Uh, yeah, I was very much... Uh, I think after primary three, mm. I was pretty much left to my own devices. Mm. I would get, you know, come home from school by myself and then like, you know... Feed yourself and then um, <laughs> the own homework. Feed your brother. Feed my brother. <laughs> no, my no. brother was much, much younger than me. So uh-huh. I couldn't manage until I was maybe 12 when I uh-huh. then began to torture him quite a lot. Because <laughs> I'm six years older than him. Okay. So when I'm 12, he's six. Huh? Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I same with me. I'm five, five years older than him. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Did you used to bully and torture him? Well... I don't I think so. I think he's psych- psychologically, I definitely scarred my brother. You? <laughs> I don't know. I think because for me, I just, we were completely different. So w- I didn't play with him at all. Oh, I see. It was that kind of separation. I didn't play with my brother. I just tortured him. Yeah, No, la, I didn't torture him. I was just out playing my friends all the time. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, but so the parenting style, 
Did you adopt it from your parents or you just you just no, go man. with the flow? Every day we are making it up as we We're go making along. It up, right. Every day we are making it up. I mean, we we have a few basic principles that can I go by which uh, I think in terms of parenting we are very on the same page. Mm-hmm. So that helps. You know, okay. and uh, we um, our biggest fear is raising um, someone who's not kind. Uh-huh. Our biggest fear is raising a bully. You yeah, know? and so that, that's important. That, to, yeah. that guides us a lot in uh, our disciplining him and um, how we how we guide him or how we teach him. But there are also things that um, we know we can't answer, and then well, we try mm. to be as honest as we can with that's him. That's great though, because that wasn't how I was brought up. <laughs> and there's no there's <laughs> yeah. no karanguni man, and yeah. there's no dustbin throw you pick you yeah. up from the there's no yeah, none police of that. come and catch you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I just heard a parent say that to a kid the other day. Just still, yeah, just today. two days ago, like oh a, uh, the police come and catch you, and I was like, girl, <laughs> don't do that. I mean, yeah. she's really a girl, you know, and I'm like. Um, she was much younger than me, this mother, and she was threatening the the kid with the police come and catch you. <laughs> Bull, no. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, but I think um, nowadays people also follow parenting through books. Did yeah. you do that? Reading books? No. I, I Okay, when I was pregnant, I read a lot of books uh, about birthing and all that. And then after that, it's like, no time. I just, once the baby come out, it's like, hello, we got time to read. <laughs> Because I just had a, I just came from Sydney and and, and um um my my Paul's sister, uh, I mean she was she had the kids right. Everything was based on books. So when the kids right. sick, turn to page, don't know what. Right. And then so Jan and Fred, Paul, their parents were like, throw the book away. I brought you guys up without books. I can take care of the grandkids. You know the yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now it's just this kind of the divide lah between. Yeah. So yeah. I I um. Maybe now, if there's something I need to find out about my kid, or mm. want to find out about a stomach upset, or why is he mm. having this constant reflux or something, I might Google it. Okay. Um, but there is a friend who constantly gives me books on on childcare, um, and I always have no time to read. Patrina Carl, sorry, I haven't read. <laughs> I haven't read your, the books you give me yet. It's there. It's at my bed. <laughs> it's yeah. a host stacking up. Huh? It's like a library. <laughs> now, um, okay, I'm going to ask you, disciplining, discipline of a child. Mm. Do you do you advocate the fact that, you know, do you whack him? Do you? Uh, I really, really try not to. It's mm. really uh, the threat. The threat. The okay. threat of, okay, one more time and the cane's going to come out. Okay? okay, so you have before lah. I have, but it was kind of like fake because mm. like, you know, it didn't, yeah. It's just the, the, the visual threat, you see. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, well, we're, we're not big into yeah. uh, corporal punishment, but mm. you know, um, that's raising the voice. And I think mm. nowadays, um, now that he's eight, we've raised the voice a lot less. When he was like, you know, four, five, six, there's a lot of, there's a lot of shouting. Mm. And I always feel very guilty after I shout. Um, but um, having talked to other parents, mm. I realize that shouting is a very common thing. It's a very common thing, right? It's Just very, very common. Exasperated, right? Wow. Yeah. How? It's very, very common. Um, and but there, I, I do know parents who. Um, talk to their kids very gently as well, and I, I, I just try to, to a certain point, and then and then it becomes shouting. Mm. Then I feel guilty, and then after that, there's apologies and tears, and then I mean, you apologize to him or he apologize to you? No, I, I'll try and explain oh, to explain him, him why, <laughs> and then he will apologize to me, oh, okay, and then okay, like, yeah, okay. there's a lot of that. Mm. Um, I I remember reading an article once, uh, saying that we should not use this these two words uh, on our kids, uh, because you should really you 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 set the child into a different mode mm. and um it affects your relationship and those two words that you're not supposed to use are hurry up okay oh. and i don't think i've succeeded for one day to not say hurry up, <laughs> hurry up. it's impossible yeah. it's impossible on the way from after shower to the room you know it's time to go to bed it's time to go to bed but stop along the way four paper bullets stop along the way <laughs> Why do I read one page of this soccer magazine? Stop along the way, look at my soccer. Hurry up! Oh, right, right, right. Go to bed now! Mm. Have you brushed your teeth? Not yet. Okay, hurry up. Brush okay. your teeth. And then like... But it's know? part of the lingo yeah, group as I, a parent, I think. Yeah. I discuss this with my best friend, uh, Lay, all mm. the time. And, and we find it impossible not to use the words hurry, hurry up. up. 
All right. So what's the other? What's the, the other kid. phrase? Was it just these two words? Oh, hurry, hurry up. Okay, these okay. Phrase, yeah. <laughs> How funny. You know, I was finally, I'm not a parent, but I enjoy reading parenting books. But Weird. you are a playground. I am a playground. You are a playground. Kids are attracted to you. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, when Jose and Leon is in a room and there are children there, the children will just go to him and then yeah. like treat him like a playground. They treat me like a playground, no? They yeah, they do. They, they you are the, me, yeah, they pinch me. They, they can't talk to you. They laugh at my face. They are attracted to you. Yeah, they, I'm like the can, Pipe Piper. You except, are. Yeah, strange. So I read, I read this parenting book by Pamela Druckerman. Uh, she's American living in Paris and she, she, she brings up her kid, right, in Paris and she realises there's a huge different yes. style I've, of parenting from the, about the French and then the rest of the world. Yeah. So the French kids by three, they're sitting quite quiet at the table eating, huh? Yeah. Uh, not, not, not a single peep out of them. Yeah. And... And they, they, they train them to sleep through the night yeah. as babies. And I, yeah. I think it's quite impossible. Uh. <laughs> yeah. I did sleep training also. Right. And does it, does it work? It did work. Oh, okay. um, it did work, but it requires some kind of hardening of your heart because, you know, it requires to let the baby cry mm. and then you don't go and check. Yep. And then after, there's the, the, the intervals where you go in and check on your child. And of course, if nothing's wrong, you go out again and mm. the interval becomes longer and longer. Right. Uh, and then eventually... Um, the idea is to get the child to sleep on its own. Because mm. if you rock a child to sleep, or rock a baby to sleep, uh, the, the sleep cycle is like 90 minutes or something. So every 90 minutes, if they wake up and they find that they're not rocked, being rocked, yeah, they cry. They cry. And then you have to go back and do it again. But the whole idea is they just go to sleep by themselves. And right. when they wake up, they'll just go, oh, okay, and then they just go back to sleep again. You know? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, but it requires this one week of um, letting them cry. them cry it out. Because mm. they cry themselves to sleep, right? Basically, yeah. Day. No, I mean they they if from the beginning you don't rock them, it should be no problem. But of course, it's very difficult to resist holding a baby in your arms and rocking them to sleep, you know. Mm. And then once you get into that habit, it's very hard to break. So this method is called ferberization. Is 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 Richard Ferber, I believe, mm. is his name. So they call the ferberize. They call this the ferberization of your baby. <laughs> and I only know one other friend who has managed to do it because. Everybody else I know on the second day, third day, they're like, oh, I'm so they sorry. And they, can't, they can't. And then the child ends up sleeping in the parents' bed for nine years, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So I remember um, you're supposed to, and all my friends who had tried it before said, okay, la, I mean, I, I didn't manage to do it. And then my friend who managed to do it, and then there were other people uh, I read online managed to do it. They told me, or they, t they said that the baby will cry for maximum, maximum one hour plus. And then after that, they go to sleep. Hmm. And then the next day, it should be shorter. It should be like maybe 45 minutes. And then they'll cry for half an hour oh. like that. So I remember the first day we decided to do this because I was waking up six times a night and oh. it was just not happening. We, I was mm. like How sleep cope, deprived. Right? Yeah. Just can't deal with life. Um, so we decided to do this. And uh, on the first night, Ken said, okay, you go, you go. I was going to watch a play. He said, you go watch a play and um, I'll, I'll handle it. I'm like, are you sure? Our first night doing this for birthing, he's like, yeah, 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 I'll do it. Don't worry, don't worry. I went and watched play. I came back. Four hours later, my baby was still crying. <laughs> and Ken was like tearing his hair out. There were little notes. There was a whole pad of notes that he had made. You know, uh, sniffles, oh. loud crying. Uh, and the crying, time. Yeah, the time. <laughs> crying like someone is stabbing him. <laughs> Eyes out. Still crying. No trying. No rep. No, he made, and he, he looked at me as I stepped in through the door. And he said, who is this Richard Ferber guy? <laughs> I'm going to murder his family. <laughs> Where does he live? Where does he live? You tell me which state he's in. Oh, in America. Yeah. So we, but at that point, when you're at four hours and the baby's still crying. Oh, like, he didn't do you, stop at all. He for, didn't stop. Oh my gosh. No, okay. I mean, it, you know, it, it's the, yeah, um, stop one minute, uh, then cry again. Okay. Yeah. So, but Ken was tearing his hair wow. out. And then by the time, uh, it's four hours, right? Mm. Do you give up? Do you go in and rock him now or do you just steal yourself however many hours it takes? Mm. So, of course, it's steal yourself. Lah. You mm. really did four yeah, hours, right? Yeah, four hours really, yeah. So, I think shortly after I came home, about maybe 45 minutes after that. So, I think he cried a total of four hours, 45 minutes. Oh. He actually went to sleep. Mm. Okay? And uh, we were swearing at Richard Ferber and everything. And then on the <laughs> second night, uh, it was halved. It was two hours. 
Oh wow, okay. But you think about it, to hear a wail of a baby for two hours, it's it does something to you, you know. You're you're yeah. it, it's ev- against every grain of you know Yeah, especially as a mother. Yeah, so you mm. you sit outside were pacing and you're listening to your baby cry is is it seems very, yeah. very cruel. But you have to keep the end game in mind, which is like by the end of yeah. one week this baby should be able to sleep by itself. And the result is that on the second night it's already two hours, right? On the third night it was one hour. Wow, it's really yeah. half like that, huh? Yeah, and fourth night it was half an hour and by the a week we put the baby down and then it's like mm, and then just <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I mean and then he closed his eyes and he went to sleep and we were like Yes How many hours? Like, uh, through it, the night, yeah. Uh? I mean for at that age it was mm, five, months. five months. So he mm. he is about a good five, six hours. Yeah, wow, before he that's needs to wake great up. for you guys as yeah, parents. It's really great, you know. It's not one every one and a half hours I'll die. Wow. So it did work. Mm. Um but so not poor before Richard swearing. Ferber, the head the years all in yeah, red, itchy, itchy all. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah but <laughs> we saw at him a lot la, for the first three days. Yeah, but it did work. So I I think mm. with my kid we try to um we try not to shield him, hmm. uh, and, and and the great gift that Ken has is like when when Shan Ming asks difficult questions or mm-hmm. asks for explanations of words that he doesn't understand, Ken is like a walking. It's not just a dictionary. Hmm. It's like he knows how to explain to a kid most succinctly hmm. and clearly without having to go into too much detail that the kid doesn't yeah, understand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, I mean, Ken wrote two books. The, yeah. The, two kids' books. The kids' yeah. books. Timothy, the th- Timothy and the Fabers, and then the second one is Kelly and the Crumbs, which is mm. out now at bookstores. Right. Yeah, so he he really manages to get inside the mind mm. of a kid. Yeah, he's great, Dad. That's wonderful. Yeah. What Now, what about other people's kids? <laughs> other people's kids. Do you kids? try to, I mean... Do you, do, you, do you give other people's I mean, you know, friends or even strangers advice? No. No, eh? No. no but right. I, I do discuss it with Ken at home, <laughs> you know. With something I think mm. is great, we mm. discuss it. Not Why like that? Huh? Mm. Uh, I will also discuss, you know. Mm. Um, there's something, like right now, because my kids in primary two, there is something that we are trying very hard to stick by and that is not to give him any tuition at all. Wow, okay. Yeah, and uh, this is something that we feel quite strongly about because I don't know how this evolved to be. I do not know how tuition became a norm yeah. for every subject. For every subject, that's and, weird. And then yeah. there's school after school. So after the kids come back from school, they eat lunch and then they go to another school. It doesn't make and sense. It right? doesn't make they sense. Don't, they don't get to play. Yeah, and they don't... How come school is not enough? Yeah. And um, because the a lot of the better schools... Um, the kids can afford to go to tuition mm. for everything. I, I find that from my, my friends' experiences that um, the teachers don't do their work properly at school because if I can't finish the lesson, hey, just go pick it up at tuition. Really? Yeah. Wow. So um, a lot of teachers are, are very too slack, I think, and laid back. That's what I, that's what I hear from um, my friends anyway because uh, all their kids have tuition. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. that's our education system. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, every subject, you know. I I just feel really sorry for the kids. And then after that, they come to PSLE, they cannot answer the maths question, complain. Yeah, or cry. Or cry. Break down. No, it's the parents, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the parents yeah, complain. Yeah. Did you read about that yes, recently? I read it. The maths paper, they couldn't, they said, how can it be so difficult? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I think her point was that, uh, why why does it have to be so difficult until you break the child? Mm. You know, I mean, we're not asking you to set an easy paper, mm. but why must it be that at 12 years old, they have to sit for this exam mm. that destroys their self-esteem? And mm. I mean, uh, every single person I know who, who has parented a child through PSLE, I mean, that year is like really, really, really stressful for everyone. Yeah. I'm really trying not to go there. Why? Uh? Yeah. What, yeah, put ourselves through it like that, right? I'm really trying not to go there. You know, it's like, uh, I don't know, the, the difference between 95 and 85 is like 12 hours of duration a week. It's like, in my last 10 points. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, 85 and 75. I mean, it's I don't know. What? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know as a, as a child. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Thankfully, my kid seems like, I mean, he's, he's quite like... um self-motivated mm. so yeah let's just fingers crossed to see what happens that's good because you know when we talk about kids other people's kids you you and I have dealt with other people's kids in pantomimes yes 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 how how do you deal with those kids that misbehave uh? they're these magical people called chaperones oh really yeah you, you <laughs> 
The chaperones are key in a <gasps> pantomime. These people who look after the needs of the child to tell them to keep quiet, make sure they're fed, mm. uh, make sure they learn their music, learn their dance steps, keep quiet, keep, mm. quiet, keep quiet. I mean, they are really, really indispensable in the, in the mm. world of a panto. Um, yeah, so I, I think that when, when I'm directing kids and... Um, Usually, the chaperones keep all the bad behavior away. Yeah. But if someone is um, behaving very badly, and there was a situation in Mama White Snake where I had to, I, I gave them two boys were fighting, so they mm. were. I gave them three chances each, and um, I had to follow through with the threat. It is I'm going to take you out of the show. Wow. Okay. And I had to. Right. Yeah. So I suspended them both. Both. Okay. Fair lah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, for, for one show. So we had to do some major choreo readjustment. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. then they, they came back and um, they were better behaved. Mm. They, they were better behaved. And then, um, yeah, but it wasn't pretty lah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think that's the other thing about parenting is the, the, the follow through. If you threaten with something, I'm going to take that away. Uh, and then actually it's much easier to just not take it away and threaten again but at some point you the have to follow through you already. Yes, so mm. you have to follow through and even though it's hard and very inconvenient for you to take something away actually like for example if you threaten because my, my kid is not uh, we don't give him a lot of screen time Ah. So uh, if he does get screen time and you take it away uh, you have to follow through lah. although it's mm. so much easier to just stick a a screen in front of a kid nowadays, right? If you have to do some work yeah. for 45 minutes and then you just, the kid would just be quiet. Um, it's a very convenient nanny, um, but it's also, um, it doesn't allow the child to interact yeah. with yeah. you, with other kids, you know what I mean? Yeah, so screen time is a, is a big thing for, for us. Uh, we really try to limit it. It's amazing how we have, as, as adults now, we grew up in, a, in an era without without technology really you know and then now how how, how do we how do we kind of balance that like, I mean you, you seem to be doing it okay yeah no uh, I mean no but I mean adults too mm. are, are yeah. addicted to their phones right and, yeah. and this is what Timothy and the Fabers is about Ken's okay. book it's about how parents stop communicating with their kids because every everyone is looking at the phones not mm. just the kids yeah so we try our best. Um, there's a lot of reading. There's a lot of reading in my house because, you know, Ken is a, a great example. He reads a lot, like three books at the same time. So, wow. so I think my, my kid it rubs off on kid. I'm, I'm guilty of not reading. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We know in my show, we talked about, <laughs> we talked about things that our parents told us or, or, or words or phrases or slangs and all that stuff. Do you do that with your child, your son? You know, <laughs> that segment of the show <laughs> was so funny because the audience was so gleeful in responding to you. Yeah. Everyone knew it. It was amazing because yeah. I, I was actually an experiment. You know, I didn't know it, there was going to be a response. Do the listeners know what you're talking about? So what, what, what happened was I said, okay, kid parents, when, when, when I was growing up, my mother would say to me, okay, Hosen, after you finish your mum mum, and your nan nan, you must go and shishi and ah uh ah, -uh, okay? Then go and pom pom. Is it? Yeah. Uh uh. Then pom pom. Then go and ah uh ah. -uh. Then tomorrow I bring you go kai kai. Okay, yeah. And the audience knew exactly what they, they, it was just. It was just making sounds, really. Yeah, just making double barrel sounds. Uh, yeah, and I don't yeah. know if that this this sound these sounds transcend all the races. Is this just Singapore and Malaysia? I don't know. Or if we try to go Hong Kong, I don't know. Okay, but I, I have to admit that I don't do it. You don't do it, huh? my kid. Mm. Like, we don't do the come, let's go walk, walk. In oh, fact, yeah, walk, walk. Actually, it's a, it's a pet peeve. Whenever we hear other people do it, we're like, walk, walk. Yeah. <laughs> Want to eat, eat? Come, eat, eat. Yeah, come, come, let's go walk, walk. And then we go, we sit in the kaka. Yeah, we don't. Really? They, they do kaka all la. I never no, heard that. Like. Kaka. <laughs> the kaka, the kaka is here. Like, yeah, I mean, double, <laughs> just repeating. I don't know. Do Americans do it? Do the English do it? I don't think so. I don't think so. La. Yeah. But so I did ask the audience one, one, one evening, what's this Angmo woman? I said, so if you we, we say go and shishi, what do you all say? She says, uh, we say wee wee. Yeah, wee wee, right? Wee wee. So they yeah. do repeat it twice as well. Yeah, and they do poo poo. Poo poo, pee pee. Kaka pee -pee. is in French. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Pee pee, poo poo. Okay, yeah, I guess this double thing is quite mm. common. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's like they think the child is like, if like, they say it twice, yeah. then they will then go they into the head. Register, yeah. Correct, Correct. register. Sleep, sleep. <laughs> yeah. there, is a, there is a part of my kid which I'm very proud of. Um, he's a big foodie. 
Oh wow! Yeah. Great. So it's very nice to have a kid and uh, watch him eat mm. and eat things with him. You know. Um, Did he have like? I won't eat vegetables kind of face. No, he's a big vegetable fiend. Oh, that's great. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure why this is. Yeah. Because I also walk, observe friends who have two kids and one kid might be a foodie and one kid is like very, very picky. Mm. So, I mean, they're brought up in the same environment. They have the same parents. They should, but I, I don't know. I don't know why mm. this food thing is. I'm just fortunate that he's a big foodie. Mm. I do remember when I was pregnant that my friend Leonard from, uh, he lives in London, and the most valuable advice he gave me was, well, remember your baby has is born with a clean palate. Mm. This person does not know what sweet is. I mean, if you give them broccoli, it's actually sweet, okay? And Mm. you mash it up, and then you go to carrot, carrot's going to be like, oh my God. And then by the time you give them apple, it's like, oh! (laughs) So if you never go to ice cream, eventually you have to go to ice cream, but if you don't go there, they they will just go apple, apple! (laughs) So I mean, I took that advice on board, and... um, I think that's how, why, that's why, you know, your your son's like that. So my my kid loves vegetables. I stayed away from the fruit, so when it was time to give him solids, Mm. we just mashed up a whole bunch of vegetables first, Mm. and the fruit came later. And then, yeah, so, yeah, by the time you get apple, <laughs> what is this? So sweet. <laughs> we were given colored water last yeah, time. Yeah, my we goodness. Were, yeah. yeah, cordial, right? Yeah. Give the children cordial. Cordial, yeah. We were, like, we were like running around the house for like yeah, one yeah. hour after that crash. Yeah, correct. Then grumpy. Yeah. But but um, he's also, uh, I think Ken and I are, are anxious that he will eat the same foods that we eat. So one of the big things is uh, his favorite restaurant in all the world right now, he's eight years old, is Sami's Curry. Wow. And he can eat the masala Spicy. chicken. Yeah, he can ah. eat the masala chicken from Sami's car. It's like favorite. If he could eat it at every meal, he would. Amazing. He eats with his hands as well. Wow. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. You know, at the end, I, we're just going to ask you one last question um, before we go into yep. to your Ellen Carr ah, thing. Okay. okay. So has has your creative process as a director, as an actor, has your, has your, has your, being, has your role as a mother changed the process or yeah has has your son helped you in it I think so I think um, having a son uh, as an actor Mm. uh, definitely helps me tremendously I mean I'm now in the shoes of a mother so I can truly understand what it feels like Mm. to be responsible for a whole other human being Uh, not just feeding him Mm. and making sure that he grows but his mental development and how he views the world and how his relationships with the people around him. Um, my kid is a very, very competitive kid. And that definitely comes from me. <laughs> yes, I was about to say. <laughs> so, you know, I think watching him be so competitive has forced me to actually take stock of um, myself mm, as well. Okay. And uh, how he deals with his problems, you know, I, and the advice that I did shout, I mean, I have to also have to follow, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. So, um, and also watching him because he's a kid with no filter. So, the how upset he gets when he doesn't win at a game. Mm. It's really like, so we just, if you're going to be like this, no one's going to play with you, you know? Right. It, I mean, it's, it's it's such a sore loser. So you have to temper that lah. Yeah, that, that, that. we have to temper mm. that a mm. lot. So I think that, uh, but then as an actor, definitely I can go into <laughs> mother roles <laughs> more in depth. Mm, mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I remember, I remember when I was um, in labor, uh, there were three things in my mind The why I went through labour without an epidural why I gave birth without an wow, epidural okay. number one I wanted to um, have a connection with my late mother because it was the only physical tangible physical thing I could mm, hold on mm. to because she, 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 she this year is her, her 20th death mm. anniversary she's been gone 20 years you know mm. and there are so few physical things I can hang on to and I just wanted to go through the birth that she went through when she gave birth to me okay. you know the experience Yeah. so that number one uh, number two I wanted it to be a drug free mm. birth mm-hmm. and number three I wanted to as an actor mm, next time if I have to play a birthing mother I you can know. I know how to do more accurately <laughs> you, know? you know every experience in life becomes a weapon or an, uh, in the a arsenal tool. a tool yes. an arsenal of an actor right wow so yeah and I, I, I remember I, I played out this scene um, mm. during my uh, show Fag Hag 
uh, <laughs> yes. yeah, which, which was which shocked a lot of my, uh, my friends. Like, oh my god! Suddenly there was like, what happened? You know, it was a birthing scene. <laughs> that was a birthing scene. Ha ha! Spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So definitely, as a director, mm. especially when I'm um, directing kids, mm. it does help. I, yeah. I have. I know. I, I can see what the kids are going through and uh, a more understanding. I think mm. as a director because I'm a mom. That's well. a, that's great though because it makes you a more complete person. I, I think anyway. For as a, I mean, as a, as a it's not for everyone woman, la. It's not for yeah. everyone yeah. Okay. Yeah, there are days where it's like, wow, why did I become a baron? It's, it's tough. There are days <laughs> where it's really, really tough. Yeah. Mm. And there are days and, and and gone are the days of hey Pam, hey, what are you doing tonight? Should we go have dinner? It's like no, I cannot. Yeah. I mean, there's not. I cannot. Yeah. Let's go have dinner. We yeah. need to plan. I remember. I remember when 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 your kid was still young and we were going like, hey, come over la, come yeah. to Selena's house la. Yeah. Hey, come. Uh, mm, then no. oh, cannot call Pam ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's a whole other human being that I have yeah. to take care of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just I guess it's the next the next step la, the next stage in life for for people yeah. for us. Um, speaking of steps, you know, I think a lot of actors, a lot of us, got went through the steps of stopping smoking mm. and uh, you are an Ellen Carr therapist therapist yeah. so tell us more about that so Ellen Carr's easy way to stop smoking is the way I used to stop smoking myself mm. after I, was, I smoked for 17 years mm-hmm. and I stopped in 2006 and uh, I was so amazed that at this method uh, how easy mm. it was to quit smoking because I quit tried to quit multiple times mm. so when I recommended the book to a lot of my friends and then one by one they all stop smoking. I was yeah. like, this is crazy. I mean, the hardcore smokers, everyone one by one stopping, just reading a book. Surely, I should examine or, or investigate bringing mm. the, the live session here because mm. there are these live clinic sessions all over the world except Singapore. The nearest we had was in Australia. Wow. So okay. I went to, I, I told myself uh, when the 10th person that I recommended the book to quit smoking using the book, I will go and ask about the franchise in mm-hmm. Singapore. And that's what happened. Um, so my friend Benny uh, was the 10th person and mm-hmm. I said, okay, I, I I have to keep this promise to myself. So I went to inquire and uh, there's a whole bunch of questions and forms you had to fill out. And then, I mean, and then after that, you had to train as a therapist. I, I got the job and then, so that's what I do now. Um, as in, um, I, I do dedicate some time in um, any given month to running these sessions to help people to quit smoking. And that's I have to great, say, yeah. it's very, very fulfilling. Mm. And people come up to me on the street or they text me and say, Pam, today has been five years wow. since I stopped. It feels really great yeah. that I... I managed to help someone escape. How do people contact you for Alan Carr then? Uh, the case. I, have a, a... I have a number. Okay. I have a number. And then there's a website, alancar.com.sg. Mm. Alan Carr is spelled funny. It's A-L-L-E-N-C-A-R-R. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, anyway, if you're listening in and you, and you, you want to find out more, you can always drop us an, uh, an email at podcast at doubleconfirm.sg and, uh, and you know, ask your questions. I can always forward it to you, Pam. Yeah. yeah? All yeah, the yeah. inquiries. Thank yeah. you. That's wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on my podcast. Thank you. Chatting thank you. Like that because we never actually chat about you know you as a parent. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, this is the first time I'm actually listening to you talking to me yeah. about I have your to say son. That, I have to say that uh, my son does consider Hosan, Uncle Hosan, um, very fun playground. <laughs> yes, and yeah. I and I adore him. He's so. You guys are, are bringing him up. We're very trying. Well. We're trying. I mean, I mean, <laughs> hello. I I was first born. You also first born. Yeah, 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 Our yeah. parents use us experiment. What? Yeah, right. We're trying. <laughs> there was, there's a very funny anecdote where um, there was a time. My kid, I think he was six years old. He had to be put on a special diet because uh, it was acid reflux, mm. blah, blah, blah. So he had to put on a special diet. And this diet was very like no, no chicken, no oh. wheat, no, no corn. So it was, it was tough. No chicken was really tough. Oh. So Ken had to cook almost every single meal. And we were quite strict about this diet. And so he went to, you know, nursery. Uh, no, it was K2, mm. kindergarten 2. And every day he would open his lunchbox and eat what Ken cooked him. And every day it would be something exciting, an onigiri or some fried wow. rice or bihun. And the teacher was always like, wow, looking at his lunchbox. And one day, like, you know, like the third week into his diet, he opened the box and then there was some like exciting noodles or whatever. And then the teacher said, wow, you know, you must thank God that your daddy cooked so well. And he looked at the teacher and said, no, nah, it's okay, I'll just thank my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's anecdotes, man. Seriously, there's yeah. some things that you remember your kid does, and yeah. I think this could be the next kind of like a book or yeah. play even that can can develop, right? Yeah. Because now got you got all this experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> things you the the kids but, say yeah. the dandest things, right? And it's true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Totally true. Yeah. Thank all you right. for having thank me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the fishbowl topic. Topic from a fishbowl. Yay! Dealing with critics and failure. Dealing with critics and failure. Wow, mm. who's failure? Critics failure, no? Critics failure. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit that I used to be very, very upset. I used to get very affected by it. I still do, actually, in, in, in a little bit now. Yep. But not, yeah. I mean, it, it used to actually hurt a lot because when people say things that you thought that your performance or your work was kind of okay. Mm. And then you read these, especially now, because of social media, you read this really, really uh, vi- vile, vitriol. Yeah, that's right. Like, oh my gosh, I, I get upset. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I still get upset. I think it's natural to get upset because... Mm. There is actually no such thing as constructive criticism. It oh, is, is it? criticism. So always take it in stride and say, yeah, mm, mm, I don't feel good that mm. somebody said that I wasn't doing well. But mm. I think it's how we react and pick up the pieces and uh, get better mm. if the things are justified, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, if things are justified, yes. But I, having said that, constructive criticism, I mean, how, how, how would that be advice, lah, basically? Mm. You could have done this you could have done this better. better. It's always a criticism. Uh. It's, it's it's fine. If you think that you cannot do it better, you've already done your best. You're honest with yourself. Mm. I think that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Because I think for us growing up, I, it was all, it's, it has always been, uh, nothing's been positive. Lah, okay. <laughs> you go to any family outing, any family gathering, it's, why are you so skinny? Confirm something wrong. Why are you so fat? Why you look why tired? You, why you got two eyes? Uh, why, why you got no girlfriend? <laughs> why you this? Why you that? Right? Yeah. Uh, why you still acting? Uh, why can't you find a proper job? So it's been like that growing up, you know, for, for me. La, I, I, and it's been, uh, yeah, I've been dealing with it. Uh, <laughs> I've been dealing yeah, with it. I'm so screwed steady. up my life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Same. yeah. When are you going to get a job? Yeah. And then failure. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, rejection for me more because uh, in terms of work acting and auditioning and, and, and not having um, landed a part. So that for me has been... I, I, I think I deal with that better than criticism, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a... I guess it's a form of... Because it's the same... Uh, it, it's a, like a routine, you know, that cycles. Mm. Mm. Whereas criticism, I think, you know, sometimes it's... Out of the blue, somebody says yeah. something that you didn't expect. It's out like left I thought field. I, oh, yeah. left, completely out of mm. left field. And, and say something that uh, really personal, really hurts, got nothing to do with your craft. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And um, I think... F- Having flunked out of school at a very early age, yeah. <laughs> that was my ultimate failure already. <laughs> <laughs> After that, the only way is up. <laughs> yeah, right. No, if, if you know, if something's really down and everybody hates it and everything, you can only go up. I yeah. think that's one good way of dealing with it. That's how we deal with it. Yes. Hmm. The Hosan Leong Podcast is brought to you by Double Confirm Productions, hosted by Hosan Leong and Benjamin Lee, produced by Ann Lee and Jem Toe. Post mixed by Ken Delbridge and recorded at Splice Studios, Singapore. 